Hey guys, what's up? So as you know, full timing or even going out camping in your camper or RV on the weekends, you do a lot of grilling. But as a full timer, there are two things that really matter on what kind of grill you get. One, the size, because you're limited in the amount of room you have to store it. And two, how much does the thing weigh? Can you carry charcoal? Can you carry a big flat grill? It, it, you have to measure all these things together on what will work for you. But today, I'm going to cover the Weber propane grill that we chose because it fits both those parameters. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, so let's get right to it. So I thought during this video I'd also cover the grill that we use because I've learned when I do a video, I think I've got all my bases covered and then you'll bah, 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 shoot me off about 30 questions of stuff that I didn't cover. So I'm going to beat you to the, to the punch here. So this is the barbecue grill that we use. It's a Weber. It's propane. And for Joni and I, it's perfect. I know you've seen this on the road before. This is a, a fairly common, well-used grill because they are so reliable. And they have a very small footprint. Now you may have another type of grill, but the thing is about, a, the reason we chose this one is, is because of the footprint and room. Now we can carry, we have 4,600 pounds of CCC to carry. That's a lot of cargo we can carry. But it's not just weight, it's room. So those of you who have a bigger coach, you can get the bigger units or a deeper, and you can use coal and all that stuff. But we don't have the room for that. We're, we're on the road constantly and I need something that's very portable and very fast to set up. But here is something that I do occasionally. I got this little box, okay? And I'll put soaked wood chips in here. I'll set it up there, I'll put it on high, I'll close the lid for about 30 minutes until that starts to smoke. And then I can put the meat on here and it'll have that smoky taste. But it's another step, another thing I have to worry about, and sometimes I'm just not in the mood to do that. The other feature about this Weber is it has the pull-out cleaning tray. Now, what you do is you buy these little pans and you put a pan in there, and when it gets dirty, you can take it out, throw it away, put in a new one. Uh, I'd say probably once a month or two, I'll put in a clean pan. Gotta stay healthy. When I'm cooking the meat, you have to bring it to proper temp, right? I do that two ways. Whenever you're grilling meat, you want to always make sure it comes to proper temp. I do that two different ways. One, I use my electronic digital device with a probe. I'll put it into the center of the meat, and it'll just sit there all the time. I'll set it to the temp I want, and then it'll alarm, it'll alarm will go off when it's done. I like this method because you only put that temperature probe in once. Because you know as well as I do, if you keep using one of these, and you go in and test and check it, nope, not good enough yet, put it in again, nope, not good enough yet. Every time you stick a hole in there, what happens? It starts to bleed out all the juices. Most of the time, I like using this model. One other thing, I have had many barbecues in my lifetime, as you guys have. And these electronic devices right here, I have never ever had one that lasted more than six months. They'll click when they're new, they'll spark that propane, everything is good, but eventually they'll go out and I have to get my long little, you know, matchstick thing or whatever you call it, go down there and light the, light the flame. This thing here is three years old and it's still working just like it did when I bought it. So I really like that. Now, if I'm gonna turn this around, you can see right here, it's got its own regulator right here. And it would normally use a small blue propane tank. I don't want to use propane tanks. It's another thing to carry, another thing to have, you know, take up room, more weight. I already have an 18 gallon propane tank on board. So I installed an extend -a stay An extend -a stay 
is this little piece right here. Now, in, from the factory, this system right here looked like this. But I removed that center part and I replaced it with this extended stay. Which has a quick disconnect for your propane hose. And it has an on off switch. So here's how it works. The extended stay comes with that brass fitting that I just showed you with the quick disconnect and a hose. So instead of screwing a bottle down here, you screw the male part of the hose into here. You run it up underneath here, you take this part, pull it back, snap it in, boom, and turn on the propane. And now you have propane for, from your onboard tank. That is so sweet. I just, you know, when I, when I, when I was investigating this, I did not want to carry all those loose propane bottles. We always have it right here. Now, in the event you like that extend to stay, but you don't have this kind of barbecue grill. Your barbecue grill has to have its own regulator right here. Okay? So you can see, I'm going to show you again. Come on over here. Before you put in the extend to stay, you have it comes through here and through this regulator and into the coach. So by putting the extended stay, I'm bypassing that regulator. So it comes through this hose and up to here and through this regulator. So now the pressured propane is regulated that goes to the grill right here. The way you control the heat on this grill is you have totally off, right? You turn it on to hide, that's to ignite, and then you strike and ignite your grill. And then you can go ahead and change from very low to medium to high and then off. So when I'm cooking meat and it's done now, what I do is I leave this on. I pull the meat off the grill, I leave this on, and then I come in here and I turn that off. And I continue to let the remaining propane that's in this hose burn out until the flames go totally out. And that way I know that there's no more pressure in that line. I can disconnect that line and nothing, it'll be totally safe. As a secondary precaution, you've already let the grill burn. There's no more propane in here. You can turn it off here. And if you want additional safety, just take and turn your propane off there and you know you're good to go. That's for those who really want extra safety. But I have it off up here. I disconnect it. Always put the cap back on it because you don't want debris and dirt getting in there. As you can see, I line the whole barbecue down in that bowl underneath there. I line it with heavy duty foil and I'll change that out about once a month. I got about another two or three more meals before I need to change it. But I'm going to show you how this, all stat, how this all stores, okay? So now we're all through cooking. You don't want the barbecue out here anymore. You want to get ready to go home. You take the hose. You put the hose up there. My wood chip burner container will go in the middle. I have my barbecue brush. I take off my knob and put it in there and close it up. Pick it up, stick it in the bay. So there you have it, a complete review of the propane grill that we chose to use, the Weber, and how we eliminated the small bottle propane problem by going and installing an extend to stay. I'll have links below for all this stuff. Just go up to the top, click show more, drop it down, they'll be right there. But for those of you like us and like me who wanted a small footprint, very reliable, adjustable heat, easy to hook up grill. Man, I tell you what, uh, I, I, I just don't think you can beat this thing at all. But anyway, 
that's it for now. Until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around.